Welcome to Fable. I'm so excited to share with you the next chapter, our journey to building the birch tree wall. On Saturday, I met with our friend Natalie and her friend Greg to go and forage some fallen birch walls. Natalie had scoped out a place that had a lot of standing birch trees. And we got really lucky because the night before there was this really big storm that came through and um, took down, unfortunately, a lot of different birch trees. Because we didn't want to harvest and kill any trees, we wanted them to be trees that had already fallen. So we spent a few hours walking around in this section of the woods and sawing these birch trees that had fallen into pieces that we could move. Um, and we dragged them up this embankment, which was pretty funny because, you know, we kept slipping and sliding down the hill with this birch log in tow and then like climbing back up. Um, so we pulled all these birch logs out of this embankment, put them on the side of the road, and then Natalie has a pickup truck. So we even drove through and you know, kind of threw them in the bed of our truck and, and then came here to the store. So, uh, what did you do then? <laughs> dry out for about a week and a half. And then we kind of went through and sorted like which logs can we use and which logs um, should we bring back to the forest and you know, return back to be mulch for the, um, for the ground floor of the forest. On the day that we decided we would dedicate to building the birch tree wall, we got in here pretty early, we stained the wood and got it ready. And then we just started measuring the logs and cutting them to the right size. Once we had all of our logs ready to go, we basically had to play Tetris or basically kind of like a puzzle where we had to put all the logs in to fit together. And we ran into a few issues where we were trying to get everything in, but we kind of had to um, put the base of the log in and then um, rock the top of the tree so that it would fit underneath the top of it. So it was a little bit of a it was a little bit of a challenge, but we did get it figured out and we got them all in. At the base of the birch trees, we're going to put in a lot of living plants and moss. And then above, suspended from the ceiling, we're gonna have birch branches. So our goal here is to really create the feel of a birch tree forest so that when our guests are here and drinking their tea or enjoying a book or enjoying conversation with a friend, they really feel like they're in a different place. So the idea to have a birch wall in this space came from the different folk tales and fables and myths from various cultures around the world, having these um, winter crones. And these old women, these winter crones, act as a symbol of winter. So when she is in power, it's winter. And then in the spring, a new, a new kind of uh, entity of the earth comes into power. But during the winter, from the fall through the winter, the winter crones rule the elements of earth. So I've always been really um, taken with these stories, with these myths and fables of the winter crones. And I wanted to bring an element of her in her many facets, in her many faces into our space because the elemental power of the winter is just, if you've ever experienced a New England winter, you know what I'm talking about when I say that winter can be incredibly powerful and overwhelming and immense. So I think that many of these European cultures um, characterizing winter as an older, wise woman really makes a lot of sense. 
So our birch forest room is really just trying to tap into that wisdom and that earthly kind of wise woman magic. And we hope that we can bring in all those elements of the winter crone into this space. I'm really proud of the work we did. I think that it's really going to be a showcase piece um, for our store. And I think that our guests are really going to love to sit near it and drink their tea when they visit us. Thank you for tuning in to this chapter of our journey to opening Fable. Until next time.